Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today I'm really going to take on a project. This could be the best or the worst $5 I ever spent. This is a Shimano Corsair. It's the 400 edition. It uh, looks like um, it got dropped from the bottom of a boat to the bottom of the sea, and uh, it is just completely and utterly dirt. Uh, look, this looks like uh, liquid chocolate below here. Uh, all kinds of some kind of something. The uh, the free spool release button is stuck in a downward mode, which would mean it should free spool. But unfortunately, it's uh, it's quite the opposite. It's uh, not, it didn't release. We've got a um, a line guide that's missing, which probably if this went overboard, that's a problem before it even went overboard. The uh, track inside here kind of suggests that maybe that's what it was. Uh, and we've got an overall uh, uh, project on our hands here. So I paid five dollars for this. What was I thinking? I don't know. We'll find out as we go along. I do know that I had a chassis from a Shimano 200 and I'm th I was thinking at the time if I could get all of this to work right then this line guide assembly probably will fit this worm and then maybe I could put this thing back together. So let's play along, let's see if it's worthwhile, and uh, let's see where we take it from here. So one of the things I did before I purchased this reel, in the thought of maybe rebuilding it, was to make sure all the pieces and parts were here. So a quick view, yeah the case is kind of beat up, but you would expect that from a reel of this age. The button is here, even though it's stuck in the down position, the handle, the cap, the the star adjuster, they're all there. The back cap is there. I also made sure that I tightened down the, the star adjuster and that the drag held. And it does. So we can, and I made sure it turned. Now this isn't turning all that badly, quite honestly, and I wanted to make sure that the worm gear was turning as well. So we've got a project on our hands here. I'm probably going to do this in two steps. I'm going to take this uh, first part of the video, we'll take it apart, we'll show you what it's about. This is in dire need of a cleaning, so we'll stop the video, we'll get all those parts cleaned if it is worthy of rebuilding. I mean, we may find something in there like chipped teeth on the worm gear or something else that just says it's not worth the investment. But uh, for now, we'll go ahead and we'll do what we can, stop the video, clean it all up if it is rebuildable. If not, we'll, uh, we'll give a post-mortem on it in terms of why it isn't. And then we'll come back and reassemble and hopefully uh, we got a reel uh, that can go fishing again. So first thing I'm going to do then is take off the handle. Now there's my $5 right there usually if I have a broken handle. Uh, on another reel I could certainly substitute this one much like I'm going to try to do with that line guide uh, on the other but uh, in this case I think uh, uh, we should be okay we'll try you can tell that there's clearly rust on both of the pivots but the the, uh, the handle knobs do work this was loose which is good I guess at least uh, and so is this this is loose as well I can untighten that by my hand that's a good sign see if we can bring that off. We've got a lot of pitting here. Again, that, that's generally associated with some kind of water or damage. Later, I guess, when I clean up, I can grab a file and I can kind of grind that off. And now I'm just going to uh, just stay with that. We've got the rust in here, so I'm going to just throw a penetrating oil in there just to let that do its work while I do some other work here. And uh, we have the tension washer that hides behind the spring to keep the uh, uh, the uh, star adjuster from uh, going all the way up on the handle. All right, speaking of the star adjuster, we're going to back that off now. That was a good time to tell you a couple of things. You saw me squirting, but I also have a protective glove on here. I like to, uh, to keep as much of these uh, oils and lubricants and dirt and junk uh, as I can off my hand if possible so I do wear a uh, rubber latex glove. You'll also see a parts tray in the background there. It's just the bottom of a milk jug but I put all my pieces and parts in there. Uh, we get some some corrosion underneath there. Again we'll, we'll uh, clean all that up in a moment. Okay, what you don't see here because I don't have it at the moment is a schematic diagram of this particular reel. I will go about that in terms of uh, uh, reassembling, but as we do this, pay attention to the sequence that the pieces and parts came off in. 
take pictures along the way if you've got a concern. Now I'm taking pictures with the, the video camera up here, but uh, for certain you should uh, make, make sure that you know the pieces and parts. Here's the sequence behind this. There's a series of tension washers. I'm noticing the two of the tension washers are thinner than the other two. Not by much, but they, they are definitely thinner. Thick ones go on the bottom, and the thin ones came off the top. These are concave, so I'm noticing that these are going face to face. I'm just going to stack them up just the way they are. I'm going to invert them into the cap the way they came out, so that when I go to reinstall, that sequence is right there. All right, one of the things I didn't take, take um, yeah, one of the things I didn't test was is this anti-reverse bearing working, and it is. Surprise, surprise. So I guess that's uh, testimony to uh, to a Shimano reel. Uh, this is taking quite a beating and it's still going. All right, I'm going to crack these two side plate screws to get the side plate off. Now, you don't have to walk them all the way out with a uh, screwdriver. You can just get them started and then they have, I guess, what's called a thumb, thumb screw or something where you, you have that mesh where you can uh, work it out by hand. And I like to do that if I can. And then this should pull off, which it does. Inside we can see an awful lot of junk. But uh, other than that, we're okay. I'm just testing the bearing on the spool. That's working. And uh, let's see if we can get the spool. We can get the spool out of the other side. Uh, very dry. All the brakes are on there. That's a good thing to note. And uh, I think we'll be able to put that side back for sure. Now you can see a little bit more of that uh, chocolate or that, uh, that junk down below. Also noticing that the shield is off on the line guide. We'll have to figure out if that's something we can you put back together or if that's something that uh, needs to be replaced. Otherwise it looks like it's in pretty good condition there. We'll go ahead and take off the rest of that uh, after we clean this up a bit. But we can just see internally, it's hard maybe on the camera to, to see that, but it is really just totally loaded with uh, what I'll call sea bottom. Uh, i got to believe that this one went over the side. So uh, we'll work on that one in a moment. But we're going to focus now on, on getting this off. And as I mentioned, other than a lot of dirt, this one does seem to be doing what it should be doing and the drags we're holding. So that's encouraging. So uh, let's go ahead and let's do two things. Let's take the side plate off of this. There should be two screws there. If you line up your, your wheel that drives the worm gear, uh, you will see that there's a screw underneath here. And then you'll also see that there's a screw beside it. So those should be the two that are holding the side plate on at the moment. And as I'm looking at the back, it's very dry, but uh, it's also uh, intact. And I'm not noticing any teeth missing or, or anything like that. So that's, that should all be good. Let's see if that frees the back spool or the back case. I'm thinking it should. There you go. All right. And I got a clip down here. There we go. Okay, so we got the back off here. And I guess a spring came off here in the inner side. And we can say also that this thing has been laying somewhere for quite some time. I'm just going to leave it at that. All of the grease on this has, has melted down to where it was laying. So uh, this one comes, this one's, there we go, the spring is hooked. Spring belongs on this post here. And uh, before we do much more, I'm just going to go ahead and put that post back the way it is. And you can just see thick congealed grease, but interestingly enough, I'm not seeing the, uh, the remnants of, a, of an overboard situation here. And we're just turning it. It's, it's tight, but it's turning, and it's, it's certainly turning the worm gear here. So what I'm going to do with this is this is going to go into my ultrasonic cleaner, and uh, we're going to get all this junk off of here, 
and then we're going to see uh, what's going on. So the button does move up and down once you free the case there, which means when we get over here, we're going to want to look at what's going on. This is your trip mechanism here. And interestingly enough, that's tripping. So uh, I think it's just because of all the dirt, grease, and grime in here. All right, let's take this side plate off then. There's four Phillips head screws involved here. They're all filled with uh, dirt. I'm going to put these into a second uh, parts tray because this will be the first thing I go cover up and a lot of these screws are starting to look the same so it doesn't hurt to, uh, to put them in a separate tray. And while I'm doing that I'm also checking to make sure all of these screws are the same size and same thread because if there's a different one in there you're going to want to note where it came from and when you go to restore this reel you're going to want to go put it back in the same place. So for five dollars I took a chance and here we go these two small ones on the bottom are smaller they have a shorter throw or a shorter length of the uh, of the screw and so I know that the two bottom screws here are small by comparison to the larger one. So you do want to pay attention to that as you go ahead and dissect this wheel. With those screws off then we should be able to pull the plate off and my guess is this isn't going to be easy. But it looks like we're going to get it off. There we go. We got it off which is good. I, this is the one that didn't have to be pulled. I always somehow take that out. It's the little block that holds the anti-reverse. I'm going to go ahead and get that screw right back in there. There's always one and, and I don't work on all these reels all that often to remember, but uh, it's better to do this and put it right back in rather than lose the orientation on that uh, block. Because that block could go uh, backwards right in, in terms of the clicks so just get that done right away all right these are all dirt these we know we're working I'm gonna take those two little screws out before I lose them and the internals surprisingly are pretty good so I think what we're missing now in all of this is a good cleaning I think we're missing that line guide which we're going to try using from the other uh, the other reel we'll see if that works and if it doesn't, it's probably going to be worthwhile uh, going ahead and ordering uh, a replacement part. So this is where we are at the moment. I'm going to pull the yoke in the main gear, uh, spool gear. And uh, we're going to leave it right at this for now. And we're going to just go ahead and, and do the cleaning. I'm going to shut the, uh, shut the video off here. We'll come back with cleaned parts. And uh, what I'll do, uh, because I think it's going to work, is I'm going to go ahead and take that line guide off of this. It's my kind of donor reel, if you will. And then I will show you how to clean the rest of it up, reassemble this thing as if you're just tuning the reel up. And, uh, and then see if we can get it back into service. Uh, see you in a moment. So this is one of these times where I almost wonder if I've bitten off more than I can chew. As it turns out, the entire case had to get disassembled. I had to take the inners out of this. I've reassembled portions of this to get to the worm gear, to clean the worm gear up, to be able to put the new, or the, the old, <laughs> uh, line guide from the Corsair 200. And uh, I've just been moving along here, but I wanted to give you a little bit of an update. You're not going to see me put all of this back together. That's my next step. I'll get this to the point where we can reassemble the reel from the pieces and parts that we had there. But overall, it has turned out to be a, a fairly clean effort here. Uh, there's a little bit more i got to work on on the back side of the, the plastic bar here. But overall, I'm happy with what I'm seeing, and I'm kind of optimistic I think that this thing is going to get back in fishing. So what I did on this one while I took the worm gear off, made sure I lubricated all of that and this is, this is moving fine now. So uh, we've done that. I've cleaned up a whole bunch of grease and grime off of the back of the click mechanism. We attached the springs there. So uh, stay tuned. I'll, I'll come back in a little moment after I put some of the major pieces back together in the frame 
and then we'll talk about how to tune up your reel with the uh, the drag washer assembly and uh, put this thing back and give it a go and see if it uh, if that five dollars pays off or not. So I have to admit this is becoming more fun than a jigsaw puzzle, and it's really uh, it's kind of testing my knowledge and also my memory because as I mentioned I wasn't working off of schematics with this or anything but here's what I've done so far I was able to straighten out clean and reassemble the shield as well as cleaning up the worm gear we gotta go put some oil on that before we're done I did grab the um, line guide and Paul from the, um, the other Corsair and I was able to put the side plates back on. So now we're back over here to this button, which has proved problematic. And we're going to make sure that that gets into the case on the one side. And we're going to go grab the button assembly. And this one had a little O-ring and an E-clip on that. So let's go ahead and put that back on. I guess that's part of the, the fun of these things, is you never know if you're going to make it out or not. In this case, we're hopeful. Now I have that little E-clip that goes onto there to hold the button in. And like I said, the whole thing started because the fella said the button didn't work. Well. He was right about that, but there was a whole lot more going on to it than just the button not working there, as we saw. So after a little bit of trying, I've reconnected that E-clip. I'm going to throw the spool in now. Just take a quick shot at this one. I'll put a little bit of blue grease on the back end where it's going to go into the bearing, and a little bit on the, the click sleeves. We have our brakes in here. I want to make sure all the brakes are pushed in. Let's go see if we can't set this in there now. There we go, and let's give it a give it a run, see if the worm is turning at all. Alright, we have it's all turning right now, so we're in good shape with that. Just want to clean up the face of that spool a little bit. Some more oil onto the bearing. And that's that should be this side now. So let's go over to the face side. We have our core plate, and again, this was cleaned up. Still a little bit of stuff in there, so let's just do one more little quick cleaning with that uh, cotton swab just to pick up a little bit of the residual there that's kind of laying around. In this case, I like to oil these slides. This is the slide that's going to be the trip lever for the uh, the uh, free spool. Next, we're going to grab the click ratchet. This one also gets the anti reverse on it. I'm going to go ahead and do both of those at the same time. I'll line that anti-reverse. That anti-reverse is just a, I call them a pinch. I'm not quite sure what the, the proper term is it, but that anti-reverse will work by pulling back. As you can see, it'll set itself. It's a friction anti-reverse when we get this set properly, it's going to uh, be held in by the case on this side. That little uh, nub thing there that we have. Okay, now we're going to grab that uh, yoke. Make sure that the, the gearing is right. In this case, I'll put a little bit of grease onto the spool gear. A bit into the inside of the yoke. Again, these are all be cleaned now. And we can lay that onto those two posts that hold the springs. 
And we have those two springs. Put those on. And again, that, that spool gear has the, the back side of it has the grooves in it to accept the spool. So you want to make sure that you have the flat side facing the, uh, the work here. Okay, next up then was a fabric washer. I'm going to go ahead and put my glove back on there, a new glove. I'm taking it off when I was trying to pinch that uh, e-clip on there. Okay, so the fabric washers here are going to get the, the dry grease, so I'm going to put some grease right onto the wash and spread it with my fingers. Go ahead and lay that down. I'm going to take the insides out of this, make sure that these are all proper. So we have a nice, well greased one, interesting. I'm just going to leave that right in there. I'm going to seat that against the spool gear next. So then we have the flat washer. We have a hard washer, clean that up. It's a blue one. Got a little bit of junk on there. The whole reel has had a little bit of junk on there. But surprisingly, a lot of this grease has remained. Now I don't know how old it is, so I'm cleaning it off. And we have the keyed washer goes in the middle and they sit in those little grooves. And we have the last of the fabric washer, so we'll give that a good coat of grease. We'll make sure we wipe off any excess to that. And always dangerous. I noticed that I popped a spring off there. Get that back on. And we have the top and this accepts the um, inside um, burning sleeve. Which is this. And the only thing that I found a problem so far, interestingly enough, is I could not get this out. This uh, anti-reverse clutch. Now it's working and uh, it's cleaned. Put a little bit more grease inside there just to uh, lubricate it. But I wasn't going to, for a $5 reel that I'm going to use personally, I imagine, if it works. We haven't tested it yet. But if it works, uh, I'm not going to to ruin the whole thing and go try and buy a case. I think that this is frozen in there. Uh, so that's been the only downside so far in terms of everything that I've found. All right, then we're going to put this back in. Hopefully we'll be able to seat everything the right way. You want to line up those holes. Remember we took the four side plate screws out. The small ones were below. Let's go grab the two small ones. And again, I mentioned that I brought them out of a separate case. Oh, here's one of the small ones. I'm going to do this over the pail in case it falls. I don't want to go chasing it around on the floor somewhere. Put it right over my, uh, my sleeve. Put the other one in. There we go. And I had the two longer ones were next. I'm getting close to the moment of, of truth here to see if it was just a, a fun puzzle that doesn't have any value to it or if it was more than that. Looking at my parts tray, here's one of the beauties of a parts tray. Notice I have a small screw here. I know exactly where that small screw goes. And if I, uh, if I was just letting pieces and parts out on the table, it might be an easy one to miss. So let's grab a small micro screwdriver here. 
that goes in the cross post underneath that uh, trip lever button there. So let's get that back in. Okay, that's all of the pieces and parts that came out of this tray. I have my side uh, tensioner cap, my little spring. Let's go make sure that gets on there. That's going to put tension on the spool gear. Let's go ahead and load this up then. Almost coming back the way it should have looked when I purchased it. Almost a moment of truth now. I'm going to find out if it's a rousing success or an abject failure. Okay, we put the shim washers in here in reverse order. I'm just going to stack those right back on there. There's still one in here. I'm just going to clean this off, and all the cleaning I did, this one didn't get cleaned. Go ahead and put the star drag on. Next up is the tension washer. A handle. Well, the handle's got pitting on it, but other than that, that's fine. And these handle guides that we put the, the washer of uh, the WD-40 on all those times ago seems to uh, have done its job. Right, that's down. All right, I can hardly wait. We've got a handle nut. As the tension mounts, is this going to work or not? Sort of like when I used to take Volkswagen engines apart for fun. I used to get the ones that had the broken cylinders in them, the old air cooled. Try and replace it. You never quite knew until you hooked everything up whether it was going to start or not. So we're almost hooked up here. Let's go grab that wrench. Pull that down. Nut cap, one more screw, all right, let's see, look at that, it works. We still don't have the spring going, we're going to have to take this apart again. The, uh, the free spooling is not clicking back, but we have everything else going at the moment, so uh, we've got a good start here. Okay, so hang with me. We'll be back. We'll figure out what's going on with that button, and we'll get that one to, to work itself back as well. So I'm thinking this one is an easy fix. There was tension on the side. When you load this wheel. This is the anti-reverse click. You throw it in and it breaks and that's doing the right thing. So what you want to do is make sure that it is down and the button is up. 
And that should fix the problem right there. So let's let's go see. Might be more than that, but it's clicking from internally. So my guess is that's exactly what the problem is at the moment. Unfortunately, I just took everything else off. But I'm thinking that's where we're going with this. You have your button in the up position. It should throw. There you go. Down, up, down, operational, up, turn, okay. So there it is. It's just, that was as simple as that. So I guess I didn't make as grievous an error as I thought maybe I did. We don't have to take the whole reel apart. We just have to put the assemblies back from whence they came. And I thank you for bearing with me. This was this is a fun project. Like I said, it was probably better than doing a jigsaw puzzle. Uh, it uh, it kind of always challenges, and I'm up for the challenge. So here's my five dollar challenge: go find a reel that uh, is a parts reel somewhere. Find it at a tag sale. Find it at a flea market. Find it wherever. Find it in the dustbin. Maybe you have one sitting at home that uh, you threw aside because something wasn't working on it. Uh, go grab it. The worst that can happen is that you can learn from your mistakes, and believe me, I've learned from my mistakes. Uh, and the best that can happen is that we all go back into service. Now this one's still a little bit of a rough rider. Uh, we're going to see. We're going to continue to flood this thing with some uh, penetrating oils and that. But right now we're just going to make sure that uh, the basics basics are covered and it's working. And uh, I know it's clean inside now because I've done an awful lot of cleaning off camera. So that's not my issue here. And uh, I'm, my guessing right now is that uh, with a little bit of use and working in some of the, uh, the lubricants and that that we put on this reel, that this one is actually capable of going fishing again. So there you have it. Just more time with that nut cap. So you have to line this flat spot up almost dead to that hole, otherwise the nut cap doesn't line up with the screw. That's where we are at the moment. Last time I guess I got more lucky. A luckier. Here we go. This is it. Alrighty, there we go. The Shimano. Corsair 400, a, uh, a reel that was given up for dead, it's back and working again, we're nice and tight with the, the drags are working, a little bit of noise but not terrible, free spool release that now is releasing this free, nice, probably want to loosen that tensioner up a little bit, but we've got that working, and we've got a button that's clicking back now, so there you go, that's it. Happy to report that for five bucks, a little bit of knowledge, an extra donor reel, and uh, some time on my hands, we were able to get this one back working. So, uh, hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you learned something from it, and I hope you're encouraged to uh, to take on some projects where uh, maybe the uh, the outcome isn't for certain, and to uh, to take your chances with it. That's what uh, this is all about. So, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.